It's looking good. Well, spring has sprung, and along with those cherry blossoms comes a whole bunch of unwelcome surge in pollen. Take a look at this. Yes, this. We've shown you this picture of a pollen haze blanketing Durham, North Carolina. Looks like something out of an allergy sufferer's nightmare. It really does look like something out of a movie. A tree pollen count in that area recently reached its highest level in six years, and it is just the beginning. I mean, it looks like a photoshopped picture, but it's not. Joining us live in the loft this morning, Dr. Sally Jew Bailey, an allergy specialist at Virginia Hospital Center here to discuss allergy relief and what exactly you need to know and to kind of break it all down for us because uh, uh, two weeks ago, Sally, doctor, I um, experienced what I thought was a cold, and now I'm thinking it was probably allergies, and it was really going around our office. How can somebody tell the difference between whether they're sick because of allergies or they're sick because of something else? Oh, sure. Well, it can be very confusing. It is. Um, there's a lot of similarities. Patients will have sneezing, congestion, feel really run down. But the difference is, if you have a cold or the flu, you'll have a high fever. It'll okay. last maybe for about seven to ten days. But with allergies, unfortunately, it'll last as long as the pollen's around. So that oh, means usually oh. about six weeks or longer. Wow. Okay. And, and that is not associated with having the flu. So that's how right. You can and tell. it's confusing because okay. the flu season this year was a little bit later in its peak. Normally, it peaks around February, March. Right. This year, it's been March into early April. So Absolutely. we have had patients who thought they had allergies who came in, and they had high fevers associated with it, and that's usually more likely a viral infection like the flu or the cold. But if that you're having congestion, too. you're having itchy, watery eyes, you're mm -hmm. sneezing, and it looks like you've had a cold for several weeks, it's most likely allergies. Okay, so even if you don't have that um, fever and you have that congestion, mm -hmm. that is a, a sign that it's allergies. Right, and usually okay. it's your coworkers that tell you, hey, you've had this cold for three weeks now. What's going on, Bob? Exactly. What's going on? Yeah, you exactly. need to get into the doctor. And if you saw what you were mentioning about North Carolina, we're actually just a few weeks behind them in pollen season. Oh. So we haven't peaked we yet. Go, it's still coming. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sure viewers out there are going to love of that if you're already suffering with it it hasn't peaked yet and you you brought mm -hmm. in some stuff um, because there's actually been some really neat advancements in this field for allergy sufferers there has um, especially when it comes to testing a lot of adults remember when they were a kid and they got tested mm -hmm. they remember needles and I'm sure everyone's thinking ouch I don't want to be yes. helped with needles multiple times well what we now use is actually a little plastic device that looks like this with several different prongs on it so we can test you for eight different allergens at the same time. Oh, and if you don't great. mind, I'll show you. Absolutely. So it actually dips in a well with various allergens. Okay. We place it on the patient's skin and gently press it and let go. And there'll be little extracts that sit on your skin. And if you're allergic, they'll pop up like little bumps. You'll be able to tell what exactly is causing you some exactly. issues. Exactly. If we have oak or birch or elm or maple on here, we'll know exactly what you're allergic to. And it is light and easy, especially if you don't like needles. This is the way to go. Exactly. And you can do multiple of those, right? You can. And so this is actually what we call a, a pain controller, less painful way of doing testing. Oh, great. Yep. All right. What else do you have here for us? So a little uh, advice for patients on what they can do, because obviously as soon as you step out your door, oh. you're coated with the pollen. Absolutely. If you look at your car, you can see while it's sitting outside, it's got a dusting of pollen all around it. It's right? so beautiful <laughs> to look at. <laughs> so that means that unfortunately you're getting it in your eyes, you're getting it inside your nose and your lungs as soon as you step outside. Okay. So when you come home for the day, go ahead and shower, wash ah. your hair, change into clean clothes. Otherwise you're bringing all of that into bed with you into and breathing it, exactly, and breathing it in all night long. Keep okay. those windows closed so the pollen doesn't come inside. And then after you shower, a couple of things that you can do is use a little saline rinse. Okay. Most people are familiar with the traditional neti pot. Yes. It's filled with saline. This part goes in your nose and it flushes it through. I found this to be a little bit easier. It's a little squeeze bottle. Ah. Same concept with saline. There's a little straw in there. There's a little hole at the top and you can do a rinse as well. So okay. we usually say rinse all that pollen out of your nasal system, blow your nose, and then follow it up with the nasal spray. And that will help to calm down the allergic symptoms in your nose. Oh, this is great. Very, very uh, good for people who need to be diligent about it if they are really extreme exactly. sufferers. Exactly. And it makes a big difference because the longer the pollen sitting in there, mm -hmm. the longer you're going to be suffering. If you're going to be, got... yeah, if you're going to be out for a while, wear a baseball cap. Okay. Prevent it from coming down in your eyes. Oh, wear I some never sunglasses, thought of that. especially wraparounds, because it'll help to co cover and protect your eyes.
Okay, so these are some really great tips, um, especially with the covering up. I would think that it's just kind of everywhere in that bed and I can't do anything about it. Um, so we appreciate that. And, and doctor, if anybody wants to get a yeah. hold of you, kind of ask you more questions about this sure. or help with advanced treatment, how can they get a hold of you? So I am located at Virginia Hospital Center at Allergy Associates of Northern Virginia at AllergyNVA.com. Uh, Doc, we appreciate you being sure. in here. A lot of good information great. that we need this morning for us. I know I'm definitely taking notes. Guys, we'll send it back over to you. Quick Allergy 101 question. If it's just a tree, allergy that we have like yes. in a week or two are we good for the rest of the year it's usually about a six to eight week uh, season so we've we've kind of had an up and down especially since we know the weather has been cold and we get rain to kind of wash it out but the trees still need to release their pollen so yes once that season is over bring it back. we're done with the trees but then we have grasses that come in just after the tree so and then the weeds follow and the cycle oh. Thanks, Doctor. in other she words misery trees. setting it <laughs> Settle in, right. <laughs> you know, survive one more week exactly. and we're good to go. Wendy's divorce might